What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our another Angle of Pursuit. Uh, we are going to be joined by Ben Ralph today, a writer over at FakePigskin.com. Uh, I am your host, Kyle Robert. Uh, ben, you know, we were chatting, and you you mentioned there was two quarterbacks that stood out among, among the rest as guys that are being undervalued in fantasy football leagues. Uh, you know, let's start with your first one, and that's Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's obviously, you know, dealing with the shoulder injury. He's starting to drop a little bit in um, in drafts. He's going, you know, towards the end of the eighth round. Uh, talk to me about Luck and why you think he's underrated. It's kind of format dependent, really, because it all kind of depends. If you're in a super flex league or you're in quite a deep two quarterback league, Luck is not undervalued because that risk is so much higher. But if you're in a one quarterback league, you're talking 10, 12 teams, then Andrew Luck at the sixth pick, with the upside he provides, where he has the potential to be a two slash three in this in the, in this year if he gets back like on a per game basis i can handle two or three weeks maybe four weeks without andrew luck but as i discussed in my talk about zeke elliott the other week i want the guy with the high ceiling i want the guy that can win me a playoff series and i really think andrew luck is that guy yeah i know luck you know and, and he is definitely tempting definitely when he's on the field when he has his guys he's awesome uh, but he is dealing with a shoulder injury. They're going to be without center Ryan Kelly for six weeks. You know, does the potential of re-injury concern you when you're drafting Luck? And, uh, you know, kind of what would you do assuming he goes out? Are you just running to the waiver wire? Yeah, I think quarterbacks are deep enough position, especially if, like, we're talking about those 10, 12-team leagues. Um, often people will draft two quarterbacks, but they will very quickly drop one when they've got running back injuries, wide receiver injuries. I mean, like, let's have a quick look at an average draft position. Who is sort of 12 through 16? You're talking about Dak Prescott, Ben Roethlisberger, Matt Stafford, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning. You've got Carson Wentz, Andy Dalton, Tyrod Taylor, and Carson Palmer down to 20. I'd have any of those guys in fits and bursts. I'd even maybe look at streaming those guys, like start the season with Andy Dalton, maybe Chuck Carson Wentz in when he's got a nice matchup. If if you've got the flexibility, the deeper your bench, the better this is, the more you can take this risk. But I really think you get Ryan Kelly back in week six, you get Andrew Luck back, you get the combination going, hopefully Dante Moncrief gets healthy, and Andrew Luck could put up a ton of yards for you at the end of the year and absolutely win you leagues. And, and that's what I, we are aiming for here. These first six weeks are about building a platform. The next eight weeks are about winning your league. Yeah, and obviously every year there's a quarterback that emerges from the pile at the bottom, um, and, and luck would be a good, as good a bet as any. Uh, obviously the injury concern is real, but um, you know you brought up some good points. Now the other guy on your list I think is going to raise some eyebrows, but uh, I'm definitely on board with. Tell everybody uh, who you think is undervalued. I think Jared Goff is hugely undervalued going into this year. I mean, what we saw last year was a guy who was held out, held out, held out, didn't get to see enough of the, the reps he should have got to see as a rookie. I, I really think that if, if in his position, he needed to be given more reps. I feel like you've got the same situation arising this year a bit with Kaiser and Deshaun Watson. that they've, they Because they've been sharing time, they've not been given the reps. Jared Goff's had a whole offseason as the starter. He's got a new coach, a young coach, who has got the best out of a guy in Kirk Cousins that – Nobody had a huge amount of, of hope for when he was drafted. Everyone kind of thought, what, what are the crazy guys doing? They're drafting a second quarterback after Robert Griffin. And he's had a chance to really mold a team. He's got two tight ends. We know he loves to develop the tight ends. He's got some decent wide receivers. He's added in now Sammy Watkins, which I think is huge. Jared Goff did improve as the season went on. His last game against Arizona, he, he only had 120 yards, but he was much improved. He he got there. I think he's going to benefit from having, at least in the first few weeks, stack boxes. I really think in those super flex leagues, two quarterback leagues, Jared Goff is a great guy to have as your third quarterback on the bench to come in because I think at times this year that the Rams are not just going to go back to this run offense. They are not the only team in LA. They have to compete with the charges now and I really think they're going to go for it I really think they're going to open this offense up a bit more Tavon Austin is going to be that kind of gadget player I, I don't I don't think he's going to have fantasy value but I think Goff is going to find a way to get those those now four relatively solid playmakers plus Todd Gurley the ball let alone those two tight ends I, I really think Goff could have a good season I think we could see him throw plenty this year yeah I like that call quite a bit obviously having an actual offensive structure will be will be huge having legit weapons Robert Wood Sammy Watkins the tight ends you know Gurley like you mentioned I, I think there's a lot to like about Goff and 
um, you know, definitely someone I will be keeping my eye on this season. Uh, big thanks to Ben Rolf for joining us. Make sure you check out the podcast on iTunes. Uh, rate and review, five stars. Also, uh, all of our other videos on YouTube. So check them out, and we'll talk to you guys later.